Toastmasters and guests, it is my pleasure to welcome International Director of Region 2, Distinguished Toastmaster, Joan T. Lewis. Have you ever struggled to make your employees, team members, or the people you lead fully comply with safety behaviors, but to no avail? Mohammed Shukri will reveal a simple yet powerful formula that will turn your company's safety culture into one of the best. For more than a decade, Mohammed has helped organizations in the Middle East enhance their employees' safety compliance and safety culture through meaningful metrics and measurable motivation. His signature safety model has received accolades such as the best safety presenter in the Middle East. Today, Mohammed Shukri will share with you a model that he invented and implemented with great success. This model has proven to create safety compliance, a deeper commitment, and positive team environments. Whether you are a manager, supervisor, or team leader, Mohammed will drive you into his three-part model that will make you rethink safety culture. So fasten your seatbelts. Mohammed is going to take a shortcut, a safe shortcut. Please welcome health and safety expert and consultant, distinguished Toastmaster, Mohammed Ali Shukri, a safe shortcut to safety culture. Thank you, International Director Lewis. Yes, we are finally here. This is the address. But wait, what you're looking at is not a website address. It is a link though, a link and a formula to build and sustain a powerful and positive safety culture in your organizations. According to the International Labor Organization, there are more than 340 million occupational accidents every year. 2.3 men and women lose their lives to workplace accidents and illnesses every year. That means more than 6,000 people die due to work-related accidents and illnesses daily. And by the end of my presentation, I'm afraid that more than 80 people would have perished global-wide. This is all while companies and organizations all across the globe are doing their best. But unfortunately, the situation is only getting worse. Individuals and groups at work are still deviating from safety measures and standards. They are still taking shortcuts. Why? Because it makes them more productive, prompt, and profitable. They work less and gain more. But what if I told you today that we can have also this? Workers and management genuinely engaged in safety at all levels, values, perceptions, beliefs, attitudes, and of course, behavior. And by the way, these are the core components of safety culture. But the question remains, how to get from here to there? From unsafe shortcuts to safety culture? And the answer is a shortcut, a safe shortcut. The pictures you see at the bottom of this screen are from my previous company where I used to work and I contributed to the well-being and safety of its workforce. And before I leave in 2009, I took with me a priceless model and method that I led and launched and spread to all those who needed to make their workplaces a better place. And today I am going to give you this model, a safe shortcut to safety culture. But way earlier, this is me joining Aluminium Bahrain Company, the largest aluminum 
smelter company in the Middle East. I worked in this power station as a turbine operator for 10 years. And as if the noise and the heat weren't enough, I had to put this on me and this on top. Why? Because the people up there want me to do so down here. When am I going to be like them? In their position, it's so much more comfortable up there. I want to become, in their position, promoted. I waited 10 years until I got the promotion. I became a super visor. I now get to work less and gain more. The only problem was I was promoted to a safety supervisor, which means I need to put them again. Who cares? As long as I'm promoted to a supervisor, I get paid more and I work less. It doesn't matter. Too good to be true. I soon came to know that I got promoted because of something huge that happened. And my promotion was at a cost. On a hot Wednesday in 2003, Abdullah, a middle-aged worker and a father of seven, did not go back home to have lunch with his children. Instead, he died while he was performing his duties. A week later, Muhammad Rashid, a 24-year-old technician who worked with me in the power station, lost his life to an accident. Two Wednesdays were enough to be called the Black Wednesday. This Wednesday shook my company and shook my country. And soon I realized that my recruitment in the SHE department, safety, health, and environment, was part of a large and serious scale and scheme to make things better in Alba. So we soon joined the squad and in SHE department, myself, and with all management at all levels, we did all what it takes to bring things back to normal and make the place safe. And finally, in less than two years, safety was up and everybody was happy. The workers were happy, the management were happy, except she was not happy. The team at she department were up to data from very disturbing leading indicators. This data showed us that there are still things going wrong. Data that revealed to us that people are still not following procedures, not carrying out assigned duties properly and fail to comply with instructions. Although these things did not lead to accidents, yet there were clear signs there were clear signs that people were still taking shortcuts. My colleague and I raised the proposal to the safety manager. The safety manager took it up to the uh, top management who approved of the program because it was part of the continual um, improvement in the company. And soon we launched a special behavioral improvement program in one of the departments called maintenance services as a pilot stage. And I was assigned to lead that program. So let me take you there in the department and show you how this was done. Ready? So the maintenance services department has eight sections. This is what I do in each section. An example is the fitting room. After closing the door behind, I am with the shop floor workers, no managers, no supervisors. It's only me and them. I break the ice. Hi, fellas. I have a question for you. What are the shortcuts that you do at work? 
Exactly. That was the answer. Nothing. Mr. Muhammad, we don't do shortcuts. It's too risky. Okay, friends, let me reassure you, nobody's here. I'm not writing the names down. Nobody will know your supervisors aren't here. It's just you and me. Slowly, they open up. The first person opens up. He says a shortcut. The other one gets encouraged. And by the soon, I get a full list of the shortcuts that they do without knowing who does, who does what and when and where. So next question, fellas. What is the shortcut that you take more frequently than all the list? Mm, Mr. Muhammad, we probably take this shortcut more frequently. We don't wear safety glasses probably most of the time. Cool. So let's agree on that. Let's have that as our target. Next, I, I put up this information on the whiteboard and I tell them, of course, this is the target behavior. Let's get better at wearing safety glasses. So tell me, why did you say that not wearing safety glasses are hazardous? Well, Mr. Muhammad, you know, there are fumes, there are uh, sm there is smoke, there are chemicals and flying objects coming in our eyes. Oh, great. Can I write them down? Yes, of course. And I write them down. Good. Who is teaching me about the hazards? Is it me teaching them or them teaching me? Them. Okay, guys, cool. Next. So if these are hazards in your opinion, what do you think is the safe way of doing it? Mr. Muhammad, uh, we think that whenever we do the job on the machines, we need to wear the safety glasses. Um, we think we should do it also in the bigger workshop when we are out there. Uh, and, but, but Mr. Muhammad, we think we don't need to wear safety glasses in the store. Uh, there is no risk there. It's okay. It's okay. As long as you and I agree they are safe, there you go. This is the safe way of doing it. Ladies and gentlemen, what are we looking at? This is a set of policies and procedures written by who? Me or them? Them. Never happened before. Beautiful, guys. Good job. My, I have one more request from you, and it is this. I'll give each one of you a card that you will carry along the week, the whole week. This card will be with you all the time. And all you need to do, you are technicians, you have your pins with you. All you need to do is this. Whenever you remember to put on your safety glasses, give yourself a plus, put it in the plus boxes. Whenever you fail or forget to put your safety glasses, just put a minus there in the minus box. That's all. It's, all, it's just pluses and minuses. All right? and hand over the cards to me at the end of the week. And remember, no names. I don't want your names. See you next week. I'll get the cards, and I'll meet you again in the same meeting. Next week, I collect the cards, do the math, just calculate the pluses against minuses to see how much compliant they were. And this is the graph I show them. Of course, I do a, a poster for them. This is their real picture. This is the fitting room team and they put the glasses so that they can see the target that they want to reach and they have already decided that they will meet 100% in three to four weeks only. And now the day comes next week, we meet. Week number one, your score is 67%. What do you think that does to them? The number shocked them, but it also shook them to move and improve because they were anxious to beat their own record. Next week, 70%. The week after, 71%. They said they will achieve in four weeks. Do you think they did? No, they didn't. They achieved ultimately in 100% in week 12. So imagine, they kept the momentum until they achieved the target. So did every other section in the uh, workshops. The other seven did the same. They had different behaviors, but all of them went with the same system and ultimately they achieved the targets. Soon we saw a department that is not being driven by the safety department, but they were self-driven to do safety. And here I wanna tell you how we did it. This is the time to 
uncover to you the three steps shortcut. So be ready. Three safe shortcuts we've done to get this. Walk, watch, and win. First, walk. Who does the safety walk usually? It's us. We walk into the departments, we give a talk, we lecture them, and we are out. In our case, we give them the privilege of walking us through the hazards and risks and talking to us about them, and I put their data in front of them, which is made by them. A very important rule in adult learning says people are more committed to the data that they produce, and that data was produced by them, and that's why we saw more commitment. The second W is watch. The second shortcut is watch. Peter Drucker says, you cannot manage what you cannot measure. Same applies to safety, but it's more complex. So a famous question we have, how do you know if you're successful at safety? What measures do you follow? We have incident rates, risk assessments, and investigations, non-conformities, the whole nine yards. But how much of that do the employees understand, let alone influence? Instead, we give them a simple way to measure their progress, pluses and minuses, and lines that go up and they can beat. And that's why they had measurement and metrics that they could interpret, influence, and improve. And the last shortcut is when. Instead of we management bragging and taking credit for the things that the department do, this time we gave them the privilege of celebrating their own achievement. Each, each section that reaches the target, we allow the workforce to do the celebration on their own, to do the talk, to do the celebration the way they want. And we didn't even sponsor the cakes so that, that they will celebrate with. But if they brought homemade cakes, the management would participate anyway. And there they are, happy that they are celebrating and owning all the, the, all the things that they have done. So three shortcuts, walk, watch, and win. It didn't stop there. The ball kept rolling and we saw they, they are going beyond what the measurement that we have given them. People used to come to us and create ideas we had no idea that they would do one day. This is one of the sections who decided to conquer the bad habit of jumping over the pit of the maintenance for the trucks. And they added a sticker which they printed in the company's PR department to put it there so that the contractor laborers, who more, many of them do not understand the language, can see clearly they are not allowed to step. They are taking care of each other and they are going the extra mile. And my favorite was when the supervisors came to me and said, Mr. Muhammad, we want to participate. You, you're just supervisors. You're out of the scope. You are sitting in a comfortable place. You, you, you work less and get paid more. Mr. Muhammad, we discovered that we too do not commit. Our employees do not see us wearing safety glasses all the time, and we are bad examples. Please get us in. And this is the picture of all the heads and supervisors, real supervisors of those eight sections, sitting humbly in front of me, filling their cards, giving me weekly. And that's why they also achieved four weeks what supervisors we had. Ladies and gentlemen, you might ask, you might think, a uh, safety program is as good as long as it's there. The commitment exists as long as the program lasts. Let me tell you one thing. The pictures I showed you at the beginning are not from 2009. These pictures are from 2019, last year. I saw these pictures when I came across this Instagram account and I got curious. It was an account for those people in the maintenance services. I got curious. I texted the man in charge and he said, Muhammad, we still remember you. This is all because of the initiative that you led and launched back in 2009. We are still committed. How? How come a shortcut like this go a long way? Simple. It's a safe shortcut. Instead of doing so many things on their behalf, so many things for them you can let them do. 
your safe shortcut, dear leader, dear manager, dear supervisor, to reach to a safety culture is, is the three W's. Walk, watch, and when. Soon, the numbers and programs will vanish, but what will stay is the values, perceptions, beliefs, attitudes, and behaviors. And this is what matters. It's not about the program. All you need to do is just let them walk. Let them watch. Let them win. And I hope you will never see a Black Wednesday in your organization or for anyone who works for you. And if that is too difficult to remember, I am ready to give you another shortcut. It's right in the front of you. W, W, W. Shortcut dot safe. Stay safe. And back to you.